Evening everyone, welcome to Sevens Big League. Today's game at Victoria Park gave Fitzroy the opportunity of bouncing back after their loss last week to Richmond, while the Saints were no doubt hoping that they could repeat their four-point success over the Lions that uh, they enjoyed in round five, their only win for the season to date. Three games and percentage out of the five perhaps gave Fitzroy a little incentive to aim at a finals chance, but they had to virtually make every post a winner. One high point for the fixture, though, was the appearance of two of the game's best full forwards, Tony Lockett and Bernie Quinlan, with the visitors desperately needing Lockett to fire this afternoon if they were to avoid their 11th defeat in succession. We get out to the start of the final quarter, and we see the difference, 14 points in favour of St Kilda. Thomas Howard repels the attack with a high punt kick back towards centre wing, Cunningham underneath it and takes the mark. Well, he doesn't know, but he plays on, handballs along in front of him. But there's the inconsistency when we saw in the last quarter, the player was given the football. So really what Tony Bryant is doing is beyond question. not the players fault it is without doubt the players showing their confusion at the umpire's inability to make a sensible decision do you agree Robert? Yes, Locum's kick to centre wing spoiled by Bennett who's going to be down? Burns taps it out wide and this time I think Burns he may be free kick got one well he's been relatively quiet apart from a magnificent goal. It really did lift the Saints, I feel. So Burns and oh. centre wing. Looks at wide. Ruse and certainty. And doesn't get the mark, but will get the free kick anyway. So Paul Ruse. Goes short in towards the centre. Mark Scott takes the mark. So Scott plays on immediately. Goes across the ground. Grant Laurie the player, back to Burke, Peter Burke from the centre. For Quinlan, a good mark by Quinlan in front of Crawl. Well, he's kicked three behinds to date, Robert. He's been well held, and when he has had the opportunities, he's been off target. But uh, well, this is a spot that I'm sure he'd love to kick from. Now the flank, 40 metres out, the drop punt on its way, he's tripped at that too. And the other behind goes on the board. So, not Bernie's day. Four points. Looks to be rushing things a little bit today, Sandy. You're suggesting he perhaps arrived a bit late, Rob. So, trying to make up time. Maybe so. Never with a long kick. Good mark to Burke. Burke now, from the wing. Hand passes out wide. Turner takes it. Turner towards centre half forward. Crawley punches the ball away. Tapped on by Elphinstone, Keel there for St Kilda, the hand pass, puts his teammate under all sorts of pressure, and there's the result. The teammate had no chance whatsoever, and Hallers with the free kick. Hallers goes short and wide, and once again, Mark Scott on his own. So Scott, two goals for his credit, but an excellent game for Fitzroy. And Scott, the opportunity making the margin between the sides seven points. Nice looking kick off the boot. Four points, three goals to Mark Scott. And that third goal to Mark Scott takes Fitzroy to 12-10 with St Kilda on 14-5, so seven points the margin in favour of St Kilda. Three and a half minutes to the final term here at Victoria Park. Assessing Mark Scott's going, Robert, would you agree that he's possibly the best player on the ground today? Very close to it. 17 kicks, 17 handballs, and there's the mark. Seven points. The difference. Seven handballs, Andy. That's what I said, Robert. Sorry, that's okay. You're obviously a bit rushed today. Down towards the half forward line, come with the quinn. Here's Tops now, defending for Fitzroy, down towards the centre wing. Who's going to be to more for the Saints. Now they want a steadier. Uh, they're in a position where they can win a game. They certainly don't want to blow it. Side bottom across to Keeley. Caught one too high. The umpire missed it again. Down towards Fashini who takes the mark in front of the arms. Well Silvio's got a sniff of those goals. He's contributed two. And an excellent chance of a quick reply. Here's the drop punt on its way from Bashini, a good-looking kick, and he's goal. 
so the Saints steady once again. The margin, 13 points. As you said earlier, Sandy, you know, we don't see a lot of St Kilda, but judging by the press, Silvio Machini has been playing quite well. It was a surprise to see him start on the interchange bench. Centre bounce once again. Can St Kilda hold this lead? Can the Roys fight back? They still believe they've got a chance of making the five, but if they lose this one, they can kiss that good night. Bennett to the half-forward line for the Saints, only to see the mark taken by Grant Long. Well, he's been pretty quiet, Bob. Well, he didn't go back past the mark and is allowed to play on. He shouldn't have been allowed to play on by the player there on the sideline. On occasion, the push in the back must be paid to St Kilda, and it will be Hodges to take. So Hodges on half-back. St Kilda holding sway at the moment. They're keeping their cool. They're playing steady football as Mace towards side bottom. And he's going to be given the free kick. Disappointing there for the Roys because they had the run out of that half back line then. Side bottom must go long. He does with a spiralling torpedo punt. Lockett got one grab. Burns has kicked one miraculous goal. He's kicked another one. That could be the one that could win it for the Saints. Gregory Burns, quiet for the bulk of the day, but two great goals could well see the Saints home with four premiership points. The Saints are going further ahead at the present moment, 82 to 101. Good start by St Kilda in this term. They had a 14-point lead at three-quarter time. Fitzroy kicked the goal and bridged the gap, made it down to seven points. And now we see the margin, 19 points. Bennett, not clear. Still got it wide, a good tackle by Bennett. The hand pass came from Clayton to Scott. Runs past Elphinston. Crawley comes out, got the hand pass in. Hodges coming through, as hell we're not in possession. Pulled play on by the umpire. And Richard Osmond puts a magnificent kick in. That's a glorious kick by Richard Osmond, his second goal. <laughs> just ten and a quarter minutes of this final turn. Perth, members side, finds his teammate there in peak to centre wing, and Hallis interfering with Mace, so it will be the St Kilda board, who's had a pretty good game, Robert, hasn't he? 14 kicks. Put the Saints back in towards uh, their attacking zone. Thomas uses his muscle to play. And then goes short to Logan, the defensive side of centre. Billy, dummies once, steadies, up to half forward. Hodges and Barwick, oh, good mark by Barwick, because uh, Gary Hodges grabbed the jumper, had a bit of a nap, but Barwick, with his strength, was able to maintain his position, take them, and will now have a shot. He's right on the edge of the shadow, so that sun wouldn't be helpful. because he's been playing pretty well, has he? Kick for the heart. Bernie Harris on the ground. Yes, that is interesting. 13-12, Fitzroy, St Kilda are 16-7. 13 points to the margin, Robert. Hodges now. Goes long. Finds Morwood on the half-back flank. Morwood goes on immediately. He's looking for Mace. Finds that player. Mace is on centre wing. Goes short. Lead from Cronin, couldn't take the mark. He's held and not in possession, and so Cronin will take the free kick across the half forward line. And Phil Cronin, he goes short. Markle, the player he's looking for, Markle takes it. Markle, probably just too far out to score, but if he gets onto it at all, he would have a chance. And if he does kick it, Robert, it's going to make it very, very difficult for the Roys. No running in the 13th minute. But it means they've got to make up four goals. Well, he has no run up at all in that kick. Gets right underneath it. It goes into the square. Brown will be there, but he's cold immediately, and it goes over. The line. But he what? He stammered with two little steps and then kicked the foot. So our kicking expert is behind us. We can ask Peter McKenna about this, Andy. Yes, he's standing with Scott gets the tap moment. down. Cooper. Cunningham takes a well-judged mark. 
that's a good mark from Joe Cunningham. That's a Jeff Cunningham, I should say. Cunningham's kick. Looking for Lockett. But at the back, Lockett can't take the mark. A nice one to Cooper, who plays on to Turner. Turner tackle, gets the hand pass to Frost. On to Burke. Burke now towards centre wing. The back is more. Palace has gone down behind play. Runs past Bennett. Brown tackled too high. Look push in the back. Mace suggesting to Hallis he was acting. That's not on camera at the moment. Peter Brown. Bruce comes across. Lockett not moving, not leading. He must lead down there and they've come up to the space. It's Paul Roots. Bruce has kicked towards centre wing. A nice mark for Hallis. Wanting to get the ball moving in a hurry. Hallis puts the ball forward. He's looking for Pekin. A well-judged mark to Tim Pekin. Pekin almost on half forward flank. He's going to hand pass. He goes up to the pocket. Into the back of Tim A comes Osmond and I can't understand. 90 plays 103. 13 point margin. We're in the 15th minute of this final term. The Saints looking for their second win of the season. To Osborne. Chip over his shot. In the wards, ball forward. Laurie comes in. Oh, what a mark. What a courageous effort by Grant Laurie. And he will have a shot only 20 metres out. of keeping Fitzroy in this game. Shocking one to grab. High ball. Both players. Eyes on the football running towards it. But it was Lowe who won. I prefer to be in Grant Lowe's position rather than Gary Hodges all the same. Gary Hodges is a player that would go in where Andrew Speed of Tread anyway. But here's the kick. And it's good. And the Roys are still in this game. Can they come back? The margin now is just seven points. 14-12 plays 16-7 on Seven's big lead. So midway through the final term, so still anybody's game here in Victoria Park. Can they get up, Robert? What are your thoughts? Of course they can, Sam. They're only uh, I asked you your selection, seven points Robert. Away. And uh, I'm trying to think of some children might just keep on, but the next goal is a goal. Burns tries to take it out of the centre, does so. Good play by Burns. Hooks it down. Lock it in front. Makes the difference, Sandy. Well, you want, there's a Fitzroy boy down behind play. In uh, Dean Turner. It's not on camera. And there's a little bit of remonstrating going on there. So they want to be careful if they don't want to lose the football. He's up. But Tony Lockett has kicked four and this is probably the most important kick he's had for the day directly in front 30 metres out running out of the shadow into the sunshine he stabs away at a drop punt and he's deadly accurate and his goal may again open up the margin so they're able to hold them off at the moment 17-7 plays 14-12 on seven big lead Five goals to Tony Lockett. Five goals straight. An excellent kick for goal. There's Gary Burt shooting the sun from his eyes. And uh, Gary Lockett. <laughs> Gary Burt, Tony Lockett. That's Andrew Bennett, former Hawthorne. A player who has done quite well as he's gone to the ruck. Keel trying to get it out. Hand pass to Cunningham. Tapped on by Cunningham to Bennett. Good play by Burns. Burns to Cronin, Cronin going goalward, nice looking kick off the back, oh, three goals to Cronin, an excellent play by both Cunningham and Burns. You're watching Seven's Big League, part of the Nissan BFL Premiership season.
And that was only St Kilda's second win of the year. They won by nine points after they defeated Fitzroy by four points earlier in the season. The goal kickers for the Saints, Lockett got five and three each to Cronin, Fashini and Manning. It did of course break a run of 11 out by the Saints and for Fitzroy, Keane got five goals and three each to Scott and Richard Osmond. Bernie Quidlin finished up with only five points from six shots.